Hello, welcome to We Are the Music Makers and We Are the Dreamers of Dream Structures. So, the part you've all been waiting for, how does this thing actually make noise? A lot of ways, a lot of ways. Um, this is a randomly seated arcology. I really like this. I have no idea what's going on. I'm gonna save this. So, just go on over to save. Uh, this makes me think of, um, oh, call it, call it factory. So developing the save features was actually really fun. I only did it in one morning. Um, I used a lot of the code from It's Your Bedtime's build of Orca. Thank you for that. And um, the tab utility and then like all this native stuff over here. It's really nice. Okay, so we just saved this Arcology. Um, so now we can load. Let's load Shore. This is what we were listening to at the start of the last video. Athens was my first, like, the first Arcology ever saved and the first Arcology ever shared. So I sent this to Mr. Dan Dirks and he was able to load it. So all the hard work you put into building your Arcologies is savable. It saves everything and then you can share it. Um, the only thing it doesn't save is the actual wave files that the crypt uses for samples you need to share those separately all right so just quick recap of shrines um shrines are kind of the fundamental music making structure uh they use polyperk oops. they use polyperk to play notes they have two attributes, note and velocity. So velocity you know, is how, essentially how loud it is. And then note is, of course, um, what, what the heck note it is. Okay, cool, whatever. Um, they also split signals. So you could chain these together and you can make like a little pattern. You can make melodies like this by saying, okay. So now we've got two shrines in sequence and you can build melodies that way. Okay, we've already talked about these. Let's talk about topiaries. So topiaries, shout out to uh, Shane Carruth, the filmmaker who made Primer and Upstream Color. He had a film in his brain called Topiary a topiary and it never actually made it out so I was inspired I just watched primer and I wanted to call these things topiaries in honor okay so topiaries are like shrines but they have eight notes so you can see when we created this one it automatically seeded eight notes in the whatever scale we're in and it has an index as well. So whenever it's hit by a signal, the index increments, and that's the note that's played. So we have a lovely little melody right here. Um, let's add another topiary. Topiaries. I said in the last video that tunnels are maybe my favorite, but I think topiaries are 
actually my favorite. They're all my favorite, but topiaries are like... You can make a melody with eight shrines, or you can make a melody with one topiary. Pretty sweet. Um, so, notice since this isn't a generator, it doesn't have a metabolism or an offset or anything like that. You control metabolism and offset with the uh, the space. So this is a two-dimensional system. <sighs> what does that mean? That means, let's say we wanted to do a little delay action. Um, this is unscripted, I just thought of this right now. So we can make another topiary right here, and then a shrine. delete this. So I just copied a topiary up here and now these two topiaries have the same sequence of notes stored in them. So we have this little delay happening. That's so much fun. Topiaries. You can do a lot of damage with topiaries. God, that's sweet. Okay, so then if you change your scale all of the notes and those are going to be rewritten and snapped into that new scale. It's totally destructive, so if you change it, um, the way the algorithm works, it's going to find the closest one and snap it in. But if you change the scale back and forth a whole bunch, you're bound to hit some like dead zone scales with fewer notes in it, and you're just going to kind of erase everything and just smear it all away. So, which is pretty much what we just did. We went from this lovely little major melody to something that only has like three notes in it. Oh, the same thing happens with the root note. So when you have your nice melodies, changing the root's fun to kind of, you know, jump down and go to that crazy bridge where you change key or modulate or whatever. All right, so topiaries are, um, the siblings of forests and um, casinos. So we'll get to that once we get there. I love topiaries. Um, yeah, let's talk about fails. So it's good. What are veils? Veils have two attributes. Um, well, three. Velocity is one. Velocity is boring, whatever. They have a range min and a range max. They randomly play a note in that range in the scale that we're in. So it's like a shrine but it's a random shrine. Um, the minimum can't be more than the maximum, and the maximum can't be less than the minimum, so these are clamped together. You can see as we change the values, they, you know, the maximum can go higher. Uh, if you start pushing into the minimum, then it's gonna push the minimum down with it. Oh. Uh, all the structures have docs built in, so they'll jog your memory if you're in the middle of playing and can't really remember what things to do. So that's a veil, pretty simple. Um, fun to random stuff. Uh, I don't know. You could do some really wonky things with them though, like, Again, this isn't scripted. I'm still like learning how this this thing that I made works. 
so I don't know, I just copied and pasted like 20 of these, 10 of these. There's only one hive, but all the ports are open, so they're just generating a whole bunch of notes. Now we're going to the crypt. I almost didn't build the crypt because I thought it was going to be scary. Um, luckily, it wasn't, and it's a lot of fun. So the Crypt is a one-shot mono sampler. It uses Softcut, and um, it sources waves from the Crypt directory in, uh, what is it, Dust Audio Arcology's Crypt. So you drop six wave files in there, and then those map to the index. They have to be called wave, or 1.wave, 2.wave, 3.wave, 4.wave, etc. So then we can cycle through these. There's a level here, so you can work with the volume. Sorry. That's just a little sampler. What makes it interesting is you can change the sample bank. Um, and you can change the sample bank while it's playing. So you can have multiple banks. So there's one default bank that's in uh, Dust Audio Arcology's Crypt. But if you make another directory in Dust Audio Crypts, plural, and then directories inside those, Arcology's picks up on the name of those directories and will display them here, and then read each one for six waves. So you can have an endless number of sample banks in there. And this is part of the first DLC for Arcologies. There's a, there's a community sample bank that you can send waves that you like to, and then share them with other people. Uh, my one ask is that you're okay with licensing them under Creative Commons um, public domain so that they can be used in recordings. So crypts are a lot of fun. Uh, they're a way to get your own samples in. Um, there's six There's six of them because each one uses a different voice in soft cut. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about soft cut and what that means. I've already had people ask me if you can like change the pitch and stuff and like sure, yes you can. Not in our not in our colleges yet, but um I think the crypt is going to always be like this. I really like the idea of the structures not growing in complexity. Once they're done, that's what it's always going to do. If there's another if there's a lot of requests for like a pitch bender sampler, like a looper sampler, that's going to be a new structure because they're save files and I want the save files to always work kind of in perpetuity of uh, updates. So these structures are locked. Um, it's you know always a tragedy when you hear about your friends or fellow musicians that can't open old versions of their files because things got updated. So I'm going to work hard to keep keep the past file versions compatible. All right, we're getting in the home stretch here. The UXB. We have a Moog synthesizer on the desk.
UXBs are like shrines. They have one note, but instead of sending it to Super Collider, they send it to a connected MIDI device. Uh, there's up to four devices here. Those are just set via um, the system menu. Go into MIDI, and then you choose your devices here. Um, these split signals too. Yeah, that's really all there is to it. Send notes to MIDI. Um, again, this is pretty rudimentary as far as note on, note off, timings, all that stuff. It's really, it just sends a MIDI signal with the velocity and then um, before it does that though, it sends the note off. So this is much more of like a, a droning type of um, MIDI implementation. Uh, we could, you know, it wouldn't take a whole lot of work to change it or modify it, but I really wanted to keep these first structures like extremely rudimentary and simple and as primitive as possible and then let the crazy emergent stuff happen around them. So then I mentioned earlier that uh, topiaries are the cousins of casinos and forests. So casinos are to UXBs what topiaries are to shrines. Exact same layout, we have an index, we have eight notes, we have a velocity, and we have a device. So everything you know about topiaries, same thing with casinos, but it goes to MIDI. And again, this kind of gets us some of the design philosophy behind um, arcologies in that you, there's a world where I might have had topiaries and casinos and forests all be the same thing, but you change the output, but I don't, I don't like that. I want each structure to be discreetly grokable and flat and not full of all these sub menus and modes because Let's say we did that. Let's say we had only one structure that did all those things. Now, when you turn on the, the MIDI one, you're selecting devices. Then when you turn it off, you're um, selecting super collider engines. And then it's just like, there's too many, there's just too much. So keeping them simple lets you easily remember casinos always send MIDI notes. Uh, topiaries always send a super collider. Veils always send a super collider. It's one for one. There's no complicated mapping and networking of stuff going on. All right, we've only got two structures left. Can you guess what they do? <sighs> Aviary. Aviary talks to crow. So we've got a, a crow is hooked up to um, plats, which is hooked up to a QPOS, which is hooked up to a microburst, and then a black hole DSP2. Only new attribute here we haven't seen yet is curl out, so that's the output pair. You've got one, two, and you've got three, four. It splits signals through open ports, just like all of the other music makers. So with this, Arcologies team can control your Eurorack. Forests. 
like topiaries. You already know how they work. it. You're an arcologist now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>